All right, hi, hello, how are you? So uh, I just wanted to make a video, a very simple, candid video about the A7S, <laughs> A7C Mark II. What the? So it has been about a year since I have been using the A7C Mark II. I got to use the pre-production model before it was released at Condo last year. And then uh, earlier this year, I actually got the camera for myself because my A7R5 fell down when I put it on a tripod on a table and it was windy and it fell down and my camera broke. And I'm like, I'm not gonna get another A7R5, that's expensive, hence A7C Mark II. But I feel like it's about time that I give a long-term review about this camera, all the pros, all the cons, all the little quirks that I found while using this camera. But this is gonna be a very candid video as I talk about the camera. I'm not gonna talk about the specs at all because I already made a video about that, which you can check out right here. And hopefully it'll be enough information for you to decide whether or not this camera is right for you. All right, let's get to the goods and talk about all the good things that I love about the A7C Mark II. First of all, gotta mention the 4K 10-bit 422 video up to 60 frames per second. But equally, as a frequent traveler, I love the compact size and squared off design. It's great for traveling when packing into your camera bag or your sling bag, especially with a sling bag. It's great for gimbal work because you don't have that EVF bump on the top and that way you can do like more maneuvers with a gimbal. I also like the grip of the A7C Mark II and I don't have large hands. I, I have like maybe below average hands. I don't I don't know what does that mean. Although I do much prefer the grip on the A7R5. It was a little bit bigger. Made it feel a little bit more secure when I was attaching heavy lenses to that camera. But the grip on the A7C Mark II ain't too bad. I also love the stabilization on the A7C Mark II. It has seven stops of stabilization. And I rarely use gimbals nowadays because whenever I need to get a simple push-in shot, then I just turn on active mode stabilization on the camera and it looks like it was shot with a gimbal. It's not perfect by any means. Like it's not gonna beat a steady cam or a gimbal, of course, but you know, in a pinch, it works like a charm. I also love the AI features in this camera, and I know that's like a buzzword, but it's legit good because it does improve on autofocus performance and reduces noise on higher ISOs, as well as one of my favorite features in any Sony camera, and that's auto framing. Basically, this camera and similar cameras like the A7R5 can not only track and follow you, but it can also zoom in and out automatically without anyone operating the camera. When I first use that feature, I was like, am I really gonna use that? Like, is that gonna be legit? But because I film most things by myself, like that feature has been so helpful. And I've got the DJI Pocket 3 where it can like track and follow you. But the fact that this camera can zoom in and out while tracking and follow you is kind of impressive. And the last thing that I love about this camera is that you can install and use your very own custom user LUTs. That is so cool because instead of seeing the standard Rec. 709 color space or seeing a washed out image on your screen. Like if you have a LUT that you use all the time, well, you can install that LUT in this camera and see what your image looks like in the camera. I really, really love that feature because sometimes when you're trying to expose properly with this camera, you can't really treat it like you would an A7S3 or FX3 where you have to overexpose it about two stops. The A7C Mark II doesn't have that dynamic range. And so you kind of have to like gauge it on screen while slightly overexposing it by one stop. But having the ability to install and use your own custom user LUTs in the camera is just so helpful. All right, we're gonna take a quick break and talk about today's sponsor, Artlist. So as you may know, Artlist has a huge library of royalty-free music, sound effects, and stock footage. But did you know they have an amazing new feature called AI VoiceOver? It's so cool, let me show you how it works. So first you go to the VoiceOver section, and then you can browse the different voiceovers that they have available. Uh, let's try this one. The solar system, our cosmic home, it's a family of planets, moons, asteroids, and comets orbiting the sun. Ooh, really like that. And uh, let's go ahead and check out this one. Hey guys. So last night was a total disaster. From getting lost to spilling drinks, it was one mishap after another. Very nice. And once you've found the voiceover that you like, you can then type in whatever script you want in this box. And once you're done, click generate and... Sydney, I'm breaking up with you, but check out the new AI voiceover feature from Artlist. <laughs> uh, sad. And what makes this feature really helpful is that you can change the voiceover settings so that it fits your project. It's such a cool feature. It's available in all Max plans, but if you want to check it out for yourself, then make sure to click the link in the video description down below where you can get two months for free with my link. And thanks Artlist for sponsoring this video. All right, so now let's talk about some things I'm not a big fan of the A7C Mark II and uh, we'll start with the lack of a joystick. There's no joystick behind 
the camera. I'm so used to having a joystick just to navigate through the menu. Yeah, you could, you know, use the touchscreen interface. That's cool, but I don't know, something about a physical joystick, just, I don't know, it's just nice. Also, I'm not a big fan of the single SD card slot system on the A7C Mark II, mainly because I've been like spoiled by the A7S3 and the A7R5 with the dual SD card slots. Like, it's just nice to know that you have your one primary SD card and then you have your backup SD card. I almost feel like with single SD card slot cameras, like all cameras should have some sort of internal memory. Like not a whole lot, like maybe 64 gigs would suffice because I can't tell you the number of times that I have forgotten to insert an SD card in my A7C Mark II or any other single SD card slot camera. Like when I finish a project, I take the SD card out, I put it to my computer, import it, I forget that it's there, and then I go out on my other shoot and I'm like, ah, don't got an SD card. So I feel like with maybe the A7C Mark III, Sony can introduce like some sort of internal memory option. Don't worry, I've already told them. So hopefully they're working on it. And then a few more things I'm not a big fan of, but also don't really mind, like the LCD resolution, the micro HDMI ports, and also it kind of gets hot. It doesn't overheat, at least it hasn't for me, but it can get pretty hot, especially if you set the monitor brightness to sunny. But the last major thing that I'm not a big fan of the camera is the dynamic range. Like I know this shoots S-Log3, but you can't really use this camera like an A7S3 or an FX3, like I've said before. Like oftentimes I use the exposure values and overexpose the camera about maybe one stop, 1 1.3 at the max, because whenever I do try to expose by about two stops, I, I lose a lot of details in the highlights. And S-Log3 like thrives in the highlights, right? Well, not so much with the A7C Mark II. And you might think, well, why did you get this camera in the first place? Like maybe you should have gotten another A7S3. Well, I could have, but I do travel quite a lot and I don't like bringing heavy camera gear. In fact, I, I'm trying to be more minimal whenever I do travel. And I feel like the A7C Mark II is the perfect camera to travel with. Like it's not the best video camera, it's not the best photography camera, but it's kind of like right there in the middle where it does both fairly well. And the fact that I can use the mode dial to switch between photography mode or S-Log3 or shoot my thumbnails like in just an instant just makes it such a pleasure to travel and create content with. And then the last thing I'm not a big fan of this camera is the 4K 60 crop. Like it's not the end of the world for me. It would have been nice to have 4K 60p in full frame, but I kind of use the 1.5X crop to my advantage to get a further reach. Now you might be thinking, well, you should have gotten the A7CR. That doesn't have any crop when you're filming 4K 60. Uh, guess what? It does 1.2X crop. Yeah, bet you didn't know that. There is a crop on the A7CR, not as much as the A7C2, but it's still a crop. Now what about this camera? Versus the a7 IV because it's pretty much a squared version of the a7 IV. I mean, they're essentially the same camera, except you don't have the EVF, you don't have the dual SD card slot system or the bigger grip. Like I feel like the a7 IV is more of a, of a proper photography camera, but the AI feature on the A7C Mark II is, is so nice, so nice. And again, going back to the size, like I feel like the A7C Mark II is just better suited for traveling. But what about the A7CR? Why didn't I get that camera instead? Well, honestly, when I had the A7R5, a 61 megapixel full frame camera, I ran out of space on my computer three months in to getting the A7R5. Like I should have gotten like an eight terabyte MacBook Pro, but those photo files were so large that I wasn't really a big fan of it. But 33 megapixels, totally fine. Like honestly, anything above 24 megapixels is absolutely fine for most work. But I feel like a 61 megapixel camera is it just a little bit too much. Definitely not a camera for me. So I am totally fine having a camera like the A7C Mark II. Also, bet you didn't know this, but as far as frames per second when you're shooting photos with the camera, the A7C Mark II is actually faster than the A7CR. This camera shoots 10 frames per second where the uh, A7CR shoots eight. Yeah kind of weird because the A7CR is meant to be more of a photography camera. And I know when it comes to 4K60, there is a 1.5X crop on the A7C Mark II. Well, there's still a crop on the A7CR. Like it's not as much as the A7C Mark II. Like I think the, the 4K60 crop is 1.2X. Like it's, it's not much, but it's still a crop. So you're not gonna get a true full frame 4K60 video on either cameras. And so for me, I think the deciding factor in getting this camera over the CR was the fact that this shoots photos faster. But overall, like I love the A7C Mark II. Like it is my favorite camera. Like 
right now. It is so much fun to use. I use it not only to make YouTube videos, but I also use it professionally too. Like I just came off a, a commercial shoot yesterday with the A7C Mark II, where I did some commercial real estate photography. Like this camera was such a beast. But also on a personal level, I, I feel like I've been using this camera a lot more, especially when it comes to my family. Like I was not a big fan of pulling out my A7S III or A7R5 or even my FX3 to film or capture moments with my family. Like it was just too clunky. But with the A7C Mark II and with the 35 millimeter 1.4 G Master lens, like it just makes me want to capture it because it's conveniently small. I mean, not as small as a phone, but definitely better than a phone and much smaller than those other cameras. And so do I regret getting this camera? No way. And even if my A7R5 didn't fall, I most likely would have sold that anyway and got the A7C Mark II or the A7CR. Just the form factor alone just really does it for me. And I have just enjoyed, enjoyed thoroughly using this camera. But honestly, if you are looking for a full frame camera, that's fairly priced like the A7C II kicks butt.